Good morning, guys. I am headed out on one of the most challenging fly camming missions I've ever attempted. I'm going to be flying deep into the backcountry and landing at a little meadow next to a lake. It is a very tight little area. And I'm going to be talking to you guys through my kit and what I bring, what you need for fly camping, explain to you why I chose it and what to look for when buying your own gear. Also sharing some tips and tricks along the way. But more on that later. There was frost all over my vehicle this morning. So it is quite cold. Well, you may notice that I don't have a chase cam with me. And the reason for that is I've come in to land before and the chase cam flies up behind me as I'm landing and hits my prop. And I've nearly broken a prop several times that way. And so when you're doing something like this, you want to eliminate anything that can potentially get you stranded. Another thing I'm doing, of course, the whole time I'm flying is always keeping an eye, eye on my outs. I don't know if you guys can see it, but I'm kind of following a road here. And uh, there's a few spots along here that I could land if I were to have an engine out. So um, that's how I'm doing this safely. I'm not just taking off and flying, you know, over a sea of trees and just hoping that my engine doesn't quit. Well, there is the lake right down here. And there is a little meadow next to it. I'm gonna kind of start to descend down in here. There's a really cool spot to land right over here, up on this peak. Totally doable too. All right, so there's my out over there. Once I drop over this side, then I'm kind of committed to this meadow as my out. Here's the little meadow, and it looks really small. Let's do as low pass as I can, I feel as possible. Well, bummer, it looks a little too marshy right now. There's a lot more water up here than there was um, a month or two ago. But maybe I can land up on top of this peak. So when I'm looking for a place to land, you know, I can land in a really tight area. You don't need much room to land. It's more about finding an area that um, you can take off in. You need more room to take off. So. You don't want to land somewhere and then afterwards find out that you're not able to take off. I think I can do it and land safely. wasn't bad. This does have quite a bit of room up here. It's a little uneven, but nice big area. Where should I camp? To find somewhere flat. It's a pretty nice spot. Yeah, let's do it here. Well, that went perfectly. I'm gonna get water first thing, and then uh, I'll take you guys through my camping gear and give you some pointers on what to look for when uh, buying flight camping gear.
Alright guys, let's talk camping gear. What to look for when choosing gear specifically for fly camping. I'm going to take you through all of my gear. This is the, the gear that I've been using for a couple years now and I found it works really well. Now this gear that I have is by no means the best gear you can get. It's not the most expensive, but it's not the cheapest. It's somewhere right in the middle. So when choosing your fly camping gear, there's two things that you wanna look for. Obviously lightweight, and then equally important is how small does it pack down? You'll often find that you'll end up running out of space before you end up going overweight. So find stuff that packs down really small and is also lightweight. So the first thing you're gonna need is a way to carry all your gear. Um, whether that's a duffel bag strapped between your carabiners and you put all your camping gear in there, whether you get some cords and some bungees and strap the gear to the frame of your motor. I've tried different ways and the best thing I've found so far are these bags by Scout Paramotors. They're called the Scout Adventure Bags. This loop right over your carabiners then attach right up next where your swing arms pivot and uh, I've found that I can get all of the gear I need in two of these. They have um, this secondary zipper here that expands the whole bag to make it even bigger if you need more room. These work really well. They're not perfect, but it beats having a duffel bag between your carabiners flopping back and forth or trying to strap your gear onto the frame of the paramotor. I've actually had a sleeping bag get sucked through my prop by just strapping stuff to the frame, so I wouldn't recommend that. They weigh just a couple of ounces and these side mount bags cost $90 a piece. Now Scout also makes this front mounted bag as well. So you just need this if you're gonna be packing a bunch of extra stuff like a cook stove or cookware or whatever, but most of the time you won't need this. This bag right here straps right to the front of you while you're taking off and then in flight you unhook these two and it sets down on your lap and then uh, you can have access to everything inside while you're flying. And this front mounted scout bag costs $115. So one of the most obvious things that you're gonna need is a sleeping bag. There's a ton of different sleeping bags to choose from. This one here is called the Teton Sport Leaf and it weighs 3.5 pounds and costs $90. And as you can see, it packs down pretty small. I have another one, is a down sleeping bag. It's called the Teton Sport Altos. It's a much warmer bag, packs down a little bit smaller than this. I personally would recommend that sleeping bag. It weighs 2.5 pounds, so it's a whole pound lighter than this, and it costs $150. So the next thing you're gonna need is a tent. This one here is a really cool one. It's uh, made by Gin Gliders, it's called the Paramotor Tent. It doubles as a cover for your paramotor as well. So I really like that because it just keeps um, all the moisture and stuff off my paramotor during the night and also gives me a place to put my wing and all my other gear. It weighs four pounds, so it's not the lightest tent. If it's during the summer months, I actually will leave the, the cover at home and just bring the inner tent, and then it only weighs 2.5 pounds and takes up a lot less space. You can buy this directly from Superfly, and it costs $315. So another thing you might want, it's definitely not necessary, but it's nice to have, is a tarp to put your tent on and to put your paramotor and all of your gear on. It just keeps all the moisture from the ground from soaking into my tent and um, just keeps all my stuff dry and clean. This particular one here is the Gear Top Ultralight Tent Tarp. It weighs seven ounces and costs $30. Well, the next thing on the list is an air pad. This one here is the Big Agnes Air Core Ultra and it's insulated, so it keeps you very warm, especially during those colder months. This particular air pad weighs one pound, 11 ounces, and costs $190. Now, another thing you might want, again, it's not necessary, but uh, if you wake up with a sore neck, you're gonna wish you had a pillow. This one here is called the Gear Doctor Anti-Slip Pillow. It has this strap on the back that straps over your air pad to keep it from sliding around. I really like it, it works great. It weighs 3.5 ounces and costs $16. Another thing that I would highly recommend bringing is a lighter of some sort. One that I like and use here is called a dual arc plasma lighter and it's rechargeable and it works even if it gets wet. It works in super strong wind. This particular one weighs 3.5 ounces and costs $16. All right, last but certainly not least is a water purifier. Now this one here, the brand is Grail and it's called a GeoPress. So it uses an outside cup and you scoop up your water in here and then it has the filter here and then you press it down and it forces the water through the filter into this second cup and then you can drink out of it. It takes out all bacteria, chemicals, particulates in the water and uh, yeah, it has saved me many times. When I go out fly camping, I actually don't fill this thing up with water before I go. I leave it empty to save weight. Wherever I land, I'll just fill it up after I get there like I did today. Grail actually makes several different sizes of these. This one is the 24 ounce and they make a 16 ounce. And actually I would like to get that one for fly camping because it would save a little bit of space. But um, I use this one also for backpacking. So I like to have a little bit bigger bottle when I'm backpacking. Definitely consider getting 
some sort of water purifier because it will save you for sure. But this particular bottle here weighs one pound and costs $100. That's all the gear that um, I use and I recommend. I do change things up and bring different stuff depending on what time of year it is and where I'm going. But um, all my gear here adds up to $1,202 and weighs in at 12 and a half pounds. So um, it's a little bit pricey, but it's worth it to be comfortable while you're out here. If you're miserable the whole time you're out camping and you're not getting a good night's sleep, you're not gonna enjoy it near as much, and that's the whole reason we do this. There are some other things that I bring as well, just depending on what I'm doing and where I'm going, such as a solar panel or a battery bank so I can keep my electronics charged depending on how long I'm gonna be out here. Maybe a headlamp or a flashlight of some sort. Another thing that you definitely wanna consider bringing, especially if you're flying into the backcountry like this, is a gun. I live in an area that has a lot of uh, bear, mountain lion, wolves, moose, a lot of animals that uh, can be aggressive don't want to be out here without some way to protect yourself. So if you want to buy any of this gear that I that I just showed you, um, I'll put links in the description for everything so you can pick some up yourself if you want to start doing some fly camping or in, you're just not sure what to get or where to start. If you guys have any recommendations for things that you think would uh, be necessary in a fly camping trip, I'd love to hear it. Uh, drop a comment, let me know. But anyway, I think I'm going to go for a little hike. So this was the meadow that I was gonna originally land in this morning. There's literally water standing all over in it, so I would have for sure been stuck. It would have not been fun to hike out of here with a paramotor. the last little bit of light what a day this is what fly camping is all about just amazing to be able to fly up to the top of a mountain like this experience views like this and that's it it's gone Well, dinner tasted extra good, and now I'm feeling really, really tired. Uh, I got up quite early this morning and did a lot of hiking today, so I think I'm gonna go to bed. I'll catch up with you guys in the morning. morning. It's another gorgeous day in the backcountry. It didn't freeze last night, which I was glad. The forecast has kind of changed for today, and it's now supposed to get fairly windy today, and it's supposed to pick up around 8 or 9 o'clock. I think I want to get out of here as soon as possible. The only issue is the wind is coming from the worst possible direction. It's coming this way. It would be really difficult to launch this way because I'm launching uphill and towards a bunch of obstacles. So I'm hoping that it shifts and starts coming up this face right here. And then I can just launch right off this cliff.
few final tips for fly camping is make sure you bring a wing bag. You want to make sure you're able to bag your wing up during the night just to keep the dew off of it. And also, if something were to go wrong, you have a way to pack your wing up and, and hike out. Getting ready to launch. Make sure you go over your launch area and just kind of walk all the way down it and kind of take a mental note of where the obstacles are just so you don't end up like spraining an ankle or something on launch. And then I even spend like a good 10, 15 minutes just cleaning up the area and just kind of removing any obstacles that I can. Also, when you go to lay your wing out, just make sure you have a perfect layout. There's no line snagged on anything. Everything is just perfect. You just want to kind of give yourself the best possible chance for success by eliminating all the variables. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you guys uh, learned something and maybe it'll help you make some decisions on what type of gear you want to get for fly camping. And again, if you guys have any questions or you have any suggestions for things that I could do better, please drop a comment, let me know. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.